Thank you very much for this uh, nice presentation and thank you to the organization for inviting me uh, to be here. I want especially thanks to Arnaldo Cecchini uh, for proposing me to be here. And uh, also as he's part of the, I, I don't know if I will say correctly, but the architecture and urban design, urban planning department. And uh, he proposed me to talk about my recent work in the, at the uh, George Washington University on workability, that it's a work that is not uh, really related with nature uh, and tourism, but uh, I think that we'll, uh, we'll, we will have the opportunity of, uh, of uh, fertil fertilize uh, the discussion with uh, some ideas about identity, conflict, responsibility, or simplicity when talking about, uh, about tourism. I want also say uh, for the uh, people from uh, Alguero, uh, muchas gracias, estoy muy contento de seguir. I am from, as I said, I am from a Catalan university, and especially I will say that this Catalan university is located in one region in Catalonia that was the region from where the people that populated Alguero in the 14th century came. So maybe I have. Uh, any ancestor in common with uh, the, with the people that uh, that is uh, from Alguero here. So for me, it's a very special uh, occasion, like others, uh, to be here in to be here in Alguero. Okay, uh, um, I will, uh, as you see here, I will uh, talk about uh, uh, urban workability and tourism, uh, and uh, besides uh, some empirical results that, that that I will show to you. I think that uh, an interesting uh, issue is to uh, see which kind of uh, consequences these uh, findings could have in terms of uh, managing tourism in cities, but also in other kinds of, uh, of, uh, of destinations. This is not this one. Okay. This, uh, this, uh, this um, presentation is based in a um, in an ongoing research that is uh, we are doing uh, now, we, we may during the last year, but it's uh, also ongoing on workable urban places in the city of in the, in the metro area of Washington D.C. This is a project that was uh, developed by uh, a team that uh, in this team is uh, uh, Professor uh, Don Hawkins. Maybe some of you know him. That was until very recently the leader of the International Institute of Tourism Studies. He has, uh, has retired this uh, last year. And uh, also some people from the uh, um, Center for Real Estate and Urban Analysis. From the, wait, I'm sorry. Yeah, you think? Yeah. You heard me? If I, yeah. So I said uh, people from the Center for Real Estate and, Tur and Urban Analysis uh, that work in this uh, in this issue. Uh, this uh, research also explore when and how walkable places in cities enhance attractiveness and accessibility and allow to the development of social capital and also tries to uh, see how this process uh, also contributes to the quality of the visitor experience but also safeguards and enhances the quality of life for residents and the local community. Okay, this, uh, this uh, research uh, is uh, part of a, of a, of a program, uh, of a uh, research program and action initiative that uh, has been done in the George Washington University during the last uh, about uh, 10 years, uh, trying to develop a methodology that creates a census of the real estate in the US, US metropolitan areas, which distinguishes workable urban places that are those places with mixed uses, with multiple transportation accessibility, places with higher density versus drivable suburban locations that are, as you can imagine, places with segregated product ty types, uh, only highway serve and uh, low density. 
This is a, 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 pro, a project that has been applied, this methodology has been applied to several cities, the Washington DC city, uh, metro area, but also Atlanta, Boston, and others in the United States. And uh, in all of them, there is uh, findings uh, to date uh, documented that uh, there is an increased valuation of premiums and tax revenues favoring the uh, workable urban places over the drivable uh, locations. That was uh, until now, until this, uh, for this year that, uh, that I was in the George Washington University, was mostly a urban uh, analysis. Was, uh, the, the, the goal of the research was uh, just to analyze how uh, the walkability uh, of the, the, or the, 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 walk, uh, the walkable urban places in the city could be uh, it could be useful, could be interesting, play a role in the uh, in the in the in the in the urban performance, especially from the economic and the, from the social equity uh, side. Uh, since this year, uh, it was uh, the opportunity to introduce some uh, tourism variables to see which is the role of tourism in this process, and also which we uh, call uh, workability. It's uh, an interesting issue to have in mind uh, when, as you will say later, managing uh, tourism in the city. Uh, here is a definition of what, uh, what are workable urban places, uh, uh, a more detailed definition. Uh, to be very simple, uh, for those people that visit or live your life in a workable urban place, uh, everyday destinations such as home, work, school, store, restaurants, other urban facility are in within walking distance and it's a, it's a walkability, it's a concept that is related, that is very important to several urban dimensions, aesthetics, connectivity, density, form, pedestrian amenities, personal safety, recreational uses, diversity of uses other than residential, public spaces and parks, that is very important, and uh, traffic, uh, traffic measures. Uh, in the case of the United States, uh, we use to define walk, uh, walkable places, we use uh, specifically one uh, measure that is uh, a measure, uh, walk, walk score, that is a measure that has been patented by a company that uh, analyzes hundreds of walking ro roads from, uh, of nearby amenities, analyzes also population density, analyzes also a range of, of urban metric. That it's very useful for the United States, although there are some uh, issues regarding the, the measure itself that could be improved. And in fact, I think that Arnaldo invites me to be here to discuss, to discuss about that because they are doing a very nice job uh, about uh, how to measure workability in the case of uh, some cities here in, in Europe. That it's, uh, that's important. In the, case of, uh, in the case of the states, you, we use this measure uh, for, uh, to develop the, the analysis. And, in this, uh, and, and using this measure, you, we take uh, the, uh, all places, we analyze all the urban real estate fabric of the metro Washington DC, and we take all the places that had uh, a work score uh, that was over uh, 70. Uh, a part of that, uh, as you see here, when we have this walk score, uh, that means that it's, it's or very walkable or it's a walker paradise. That means that it, everything is around, around the place that, uh, that you, you, you are uh, walking. But uh, we also use another measure uh, to distinguish uh, within the walkable areas, to distinguish the characteristics of those walkable areas. In fact, uh, we have uh, here, uh, we have here the walkable urban that are the walkable urban places that uh, are uh, uh, the, the most prominent walk up areas, but also these other areas that are the neighborhoods that are, mm, as you see here, not regional significant. What does mean that that's not regional significant? That they have less than 1.4 million square feet of office space or an uh, a, a, a small amount of retail space. That means that there are some walkable places that we don't analyze in our in this in, in this uh, in this in this uh, in this study that are also walkable but has not uh, this uh, uh, significant role in terms of the uh, creating wealth for the economy of the city and then for the economy of the place. Uh, the rest uh, are, are drivable suburban. Here it's interesting to see that the walkable urban places, in, uh, that is a measure that is uh, 
an average from the several cities that we have studied, we have studied the George Washington University in the United States, means around of the one two percent of the metro area acreage. That means that the walkable places in the cases, you know, the cases of the United States, you have to 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 to, to contextualize that in the in the in the case of the United States, is really really small in terms of uh, the, the 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 wall area. And then uh, the neighborhood uh, uh, place that is the workable places, but with not significant uh, 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 regionally economic importance, it's about the third, the three seven percent. That means that more than uh, eighty percent are with uh, half uh, the seventy, the seventy, the more than eight ninety percent of the uh, total acreage of many uh, American metro uh, areas half. Uh, less than uh, 70 points in terms of the wall, the, the wall score that I said before. That, that is just to introduce the, the, the issue because this is not uh, the main focus of interest of, uh, of, my, uh, of my presentation. Here you see but another very general uh, element uh, to introduce that uh, the, uh, the, land area, the land area of those wall caps in the case of the city of, of the metro area of Washington DC, it's less than 1%, but the population is about 4.4% uh, and the jobs that are located in those areas are about 30.4%. 30, 30 we identify, in fact, 50 wall caps. Wall cap means walkable urban places in the city of Washington DC. Uh, that uh, the average extension of every one of them is about 228 acres, and we also identified 22 emerging and potential wall caps in the wall caps in, in, in the city. The interesting thing that was that, uh, well, in fact, uh, um, uh, very, very, very generally, uh, the more walkable places perform better economically. The walkable places benefit from being near other walkable places. Residents of more walkable places have lower transportation costs and higher transit access, but usually, not always, that is important, uh, usually higher housing costs. And residents in place without poor, with uh, poor walkability are generally less affluent and, and have lower educational attainment than places with good walkability. That is the general, the general vision that it's, uh, that is not, not, not the subject for this presentation, uh, of, uh, of uh, the role that uh, walkability plays in the city. Uh, walkability meaning this condition of being, uh, being uh, uh, accessible uh, walking. But uh, the question was, and what happens with tourism in the city? That it's, uh, uh, have we the opportunity to measure some indicators related to tourism in the city? Uh, before uh, Professor Larry said, it's important to measure. To measure, that's, that's a, an important thing if we want to know uh, better and more, and we want to uh, take uh, smarter decisions. And uh, well, we start and we say, okay, uh, it seems that if you we only uh, take that is a very a very uh, it's a draft map, uh, but uh, it's enough to show you that if we take uh, the location, for instance, of hotels, that is a, a very e hotels that is a very easy thing. We see that there is uh, there is uh, a distribution that uh, we can imagine that uh, walkability is in the in the in the city center, but not always it is in the city center. And we also can imagine that maybe hotels will be only in uh, in uh, the in the walkable regional significant places, but uh, maybe it is not like that. And we start to see what is happening about uh, about that. We start with uh, working with uh, accommodation and visitors attraction location and attendance, and we are working still. We are working uh, with uh, visitor spending and social media, and also Airbnb location analysis that is in progress. I won't show you uh, uh, data or findings uh, re related to this. Uh, as it was said before, to this kind of new da data that could be interesting in terms of analysis, but the thing uh, and the thing is that uh, that's true. That's interesting to use that, but it's also very hard to negotiate with uh, credit card people, with Airbnb people, with uh, uh, not not so difficult with social media uh, uh, websites, but with the other two uh, to uh, to negotiate with them how and in which terms they will provide us data to include in this analysis. 
uh, you can, uh, for instance, you, it's interesting to know that uh, there are some of those organizations that say, okay, we give you the data, and all the data, we, we, we prepare for you the data, but if results are not, uh, we don't like, uh, we don't give you permission to publish or to show anything about that. And this is the, the, the role that we are, and the situation that we have in this moment. Our hypothesis and our, our thinking was that uh, the majority of uh, visitor value and tourism business in the city is produced and experienced in walkable urban places. The second, that not all, but, uh, the, not all, all walkable urban places had the, have the same dynamics of tourism development. And third, and very important, and that is useful for the discussion, that walkable urban places need to be managed in order to contribute to the quality of the visitor experience, but, of, uh, but uh, also the foster community development. That the first uh, thing, it's very, uh, it's very uh, clear here. The walkable uh, places that are about uh, eight, Point eight, uh, um, zero eight, 0 0.8% uh, has the 30% of the hotels inventory, the 45% of the rooms inventory, the 48% of the demand inventory, the 60% of the meeting space, and the 61% of the revenue of the city. That means that in the case of uh, Metro Washington DC, the 61% of the revenue in the hotel industry is done in less than uh, one percent of the total uh, of, the, of the total area of the city, and we, we can see the same type of uh, here. It's just uh, some information. The same the same type of information here. You see always the, that walk ups, the average occupancy, the average repart. Any any indicator that we use is in the same in the same in the same line. But we also were interested that it's uh, common in all the World Cups, or if there, there are differences, and which differences are, and how those differences could help us to understand how is tourism in the city, and which is the role of walkability uh, in the city. We start to uh, produce uh, uh, some, some different uh, classifications, and then we start to see that there are not, not all World Cups are exactly the same. Uh, there are walk-ups that are clearly tourism-oriented walk-ups, but there are differences between them. But there are others that play a role, a leisure-oriented role, that means that they are benefiting uh, of uh, tourism, but not because they have accommodation, but because they have cultural or entertainment activities. And that, that there are also no tourism walk-ups. No tourism walk-ups that uh, are uh, that are, uh, as uh, maybe you, some of you could uh, imagine that all of them are in the periphery of the city, that could be even in the, in the pure center of the city, not tourism, not tourism World Cups. And we uh, define that using, uh, um, for the moment, when we have uh, all the rest of the data uh, exploited, we will uh, review that and update that. We have, uh, we have, the, we have done this uh, classification of this typology using uh, some information from the accommodation side, but also some information from the cultural and sensing facilities and visitors, and also from the, the entertainment, the leisure-oriented activities that are in the different World Cups. Uh, we have uh, some, uh, some uh, basic measurements that you could see here. Uh, this is interesting that there are some, uh, you see here, hotel destination, uh, hotel location that are World Cups that they only have hotels, but they don't have any other kind of facility, entertainment, cultural, and, thi and things like that. And there are some visitor destinations that they are a very short amount of hotels, but they have a lot of uh, accommodation, but they have a lot of entertainment and, 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 and facilities. And here, is the, and here is the map. It's also a, a draft map, but it's also useful for that. And you see here that, uh, that, uh, that uh, wall caps uh, are distributed all around the city doesn't matter the kind of World Cups that, uh, that, uh, that they have. Of course, uh, there are some, the most metropolitan ones or the most uh, regional uh, significant one that are in the, in the center, but even the meeting destinations are not in the center. And very interesting, the specialty and visitor destinations that are World Cups that have a specific, a specific interest for a specific groups, and although they have not they are not the most, the, the most important part of the tourism economy of the city, are distributed around the, uh, around the city center. That is very important because that means that uh, walkability plays a role 
uh, that could be exploited, that could be analyzed, and that could be strategically uh, planned and developed uh, if, uh, if, 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 uh, if necessary. I, I put here two examples about that. Uh, one is uh, downtown, the downtown beat and moon baron triangle. Uh, and uh, with those examples, I want also to show and to, and to, and to go further with the third idea, that, uh, with the third hypothesis that we have. We have seen that uh, walkability is important in terms of the, the tourism performance of the city. That is the first. The second one that is confirming that they, that not all the World Cups have the same uh, play the same role in the in the tourism performance of the city. And the third one was uh, what what is the relation between the the, the, the tourism World Cups and uh, the uh, social and the economic uh, development of, uh, of of the city. And you see here that if we relate, if we relate for each World Cup, I, I just put uh, two of them, for each World Cup, some indicators uh, relate, relating the uh, tourism performance of the World Cup and the uh, urban, social, and population characteristics of the place, that means uh, jobs per habitant, tourism-related jobs, that means rooms per dwelling units, for instance, that means that you can see if there are more or less uh, uh, tourism specialization, or even how much people that is, are living in those areas expend to live there, to have a, uh, to have a house there, there or to, uh, to connect from this place to the other, you can, we can see very different, very different results. The, here it was the case of, of um, one World Cup in the city center. This is another World Cup. Uh, in, the, in, in the previous one, you see here 13, almost 14 total jobs per habitant. In the second one is less than two jobs per habitant. That means that the, the level of specialization of the World Cup is very different. But, but you see here that here the tourism related jobs are quite fewer than in this other case or uh, also related with the, with the social, with the social uh, activity and the housing activity of the place. So that, that were the, the data, that were, were the, right, the findings that we get from, uh, from the analysis. But the interesting thing, and I'm going to the, half, the second half of the presentation, is what, does our, our, uh, is, uh, what that is telling us in terms of uh, our, uh, the, the, our conventional way to approach to the analysis of tourism in cities. Uh, is this a different way to approach, uh, saying something different, is inspiring us to something uh, to, to, to do or to create or to uh, validate any other thing that uh, can, could be interesting? Could that, uh, these uh, inspiring things could be also uh, mm, translated for other types of tourism, uh, of tourism environments? And uh, well, uh, here are the conclusions. Uh, of this uh, second, of this second, uh, of this second uh, part. Uh, of course, as I said, walkable urban places uh, bolster the regional tourism economy, and of course, there are different types. But uh, that means that if that's true, and uh, and tourism uh, is related with a specific, the specific uh, performance, not only in terms of accommodation and in terms of visitation, but also the specific performance in economic terms for each World Cup and in terms of the social equity in each World Cup, maybe it's important that the tourism in industry uh, should become more involved. It's not only an industry that plays a role in terms of attracting people, they should, play, they should be more involved in the development and management of walkable urban places. And maybe also, urban and place developers should be aware of the relationships between the tourism industry and the local residents' needs. Because the, uh, uh, the, uh, having, uh, having a successful World Cup or not in terms of tourism is related not only with the tourism activity, but it related especially, as uh, we have uh, uh, seen in, in this preliminary analysis, with uh, the uh, social and economic performance of each World Cup. That means that uh, maybe uh, we have to, and that is for discussion, uh, maybe we have to rethink how we manage tourism, I would say in cities, but in general. Maybe uh, we have to, to, to realize that uh, tourism management in city 
should be linked with the governance and management of the of the walkable places because at the end of the day the tourism experience is not uh, around the cities around this very small 200 uh, 220 uh, acres parts of the city that plays a role for the tourism for the tourism development and that means that we need to recognize the need to expand beyond city marketing and promotion to into uh, place management and that means that maybe we have to create links and capacity building with place management organizations that are located in the places where tourism is uh, is uh, is uh, is, uh, is produced and is experienced. And that means maybe that even we are most of us are, at, uh, are, are uh, in the university, we have to reform tourism tourism management and uh, urban development education and research to include plus place management. We talk a lot in our universities about marketing and promotion and so on, but not about the place. And maybe, maybe we need to, 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 to recognize that that should be introduced because the, the challenge uh, for the tourism management agenda is uh, related with how we make places interesting for tourists, how we manage them even to preserve places from the, uh, it, it was before uh, a, a question about uh, about uh, the overpressure of tourism uh, of tourism in one in, in some specific places or uh, even place governance. We need those are the uh, the, the challenges are not in the marketing uh, in the marketing side. Of course, there are challenges in the marketing place, but not only in the marketing side are also in the place ma making management and governance, and not for the whole city if for the specific parts of the city that will be the parts that uh, tourist visitors will experience will experience that uh, could be interesting uh, because then if we take this approach and we uh, from these uh, empirical evidences that we get from uh, the analysis, the specific, the, this is a specific analysis of uh, the city of Washington DC. I said uh, the, the metro area of Washington DC, just to let you know, uh, the, the Washington area uh, gets around 20 million visitors per year. That means that it's an important uh, tourism spot in the, in, the, in, the, in the American, in the USA context. Maybe if we think in these terms, that we think that walkability, that at the end of the day is the most important activity that tourists do. If not, think about yourself when 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 visiting when visiting places. You walk, mostly walk is the most important thing. That uh, that maybe walkability could be a concept useful in, in terms of uh, uh, design and planning and facilitating. The, co co the co-creation of identity-based urban experiences, like for instance, something that is occurring in this moment, in the, in the, even in the city of Washington, where in some of those places that are uh, just uh, cultural or entertainment districts, but has not uh, accommodation, are creating uh, new uh, ways uh, to approach uh, to the uh, to the uh, to, to experience the city. That is a, a way that is not related with the big museums and the national mall and all this uh, area that is related with the power of the United States. And for instance, in this case, uh, examples like this one uh, from the one uh, African American area uh, in the city that was one of the workable areas that has no accommodation, but they are, they are creating new opportunities to take advantage of tourism that are of tourists that are in other areas, and that means, of course, uh, bring together vehicular identity and real identity, respect the landscape, means foster the experience of those unique walkable places in the city, avoid the museumization or not restricting action to raise resources with highest prestige, or even creating systems of the cooperation with the community. And also, maybe, maybe, I think that is very clear, maybe that could be this concept of, uh, of understanding how tourism is working in a specific places in the city, maybe could be a starting point for uh, doing research, doing, uh, creating new policies that can, can help uh, uh, to reduce the increasing conf conflicts that are surrounding 
urban tourism in cities, not, and not only urban tourism in cities. Before we saw some problems, yeah, I'm finishing, uh, some problems, some problems in, in, natural, in natural areas, problems that you know in the case of city, inconveniences, commodification, gentrification, and things like that. Finally, this is a picture of uh, this place, of Alger. Uh, maybe if you are from here, you know this, uh, this uh, train, this is a small train. Walk a walkability approach to tourism in cities can create a new vision to understand tourism from this, uh, from this uh, perspective for a healthier and more prosperous community. Community, a slow community, a smart community, seductive community, safe community, uh, social community, sustainable community, of course, and sociable community. Of course, there are many things that we are not uh, solved uh, with this analysis. How to implement this appropriate level of governance for each place, that it's uh, each, each walkable, uh, walkable, uh, walk, walkable urban place. How to stimulate, how to develop policies to stimulate the emergence of innovative and creative experiences, or how to manage the negative externalities that it's very interesting, like uh, tourism congestion that it was uh, uh, stated before, or gentrification derived from the development and the enhancement of walkable urban places. Here is a paradox, is a very important paradox. As more walkable are places, as we have seen, more uh, attractive will be for tourists. And then that will create uh, new problems that if we develop the place making, place management, and place governance appropriate uh, schemes, could be at least at least uh, prevented. And that's all. Thank you so much. Multiple <laughs>